Good morning, students. Welcome to the English class in this new year. I am Dr. Tripti Gupta from Shivjyoti Education Group. Today we are going to take up chapter number eight from Hornwell Silk Road. It is written by Nick Middleton. So before moving to chapter, let us look about our author here. So students, our author here, Nick Middleton. is basically a geographer who explored more than 90 countries he teaches geography and he is a fellow of st anne's college oxford he is an award winning writer of the royal geographical society he is he has authored of more uh, he has been an author of more than 300 articles and 22 books here so students now let us move to our chapter silk road we will move through our book line by line so students here is our chapter silk road now this chapter describes about the author's thrilling but difficult journey which he took up through the Tibetan Himalayas he was heading towards mount kailash for a kora kora is basically parikrama hmm, what we call in hindi is parikrama and we know mount uh, mount kailash is basically uh, is the uh, most um, holy place which is considered for hindu pilgrims as well as for buddhists also even for jainis also okay so it's a very uh, um, a pilgrim which is of great importance for all the three religions here okay so our author he has described this is basically it's a travel log hmm? and this he has beautifully described the sites of nature on the old track uh, that is a trade route which was been um, a route from which the trading was been done in ancient times okay and it is known as silk road so this silk road is been that's uh, part of that trade route okay and this is been uh, it has a beautiful description of local culture and places okay and that is a breath taking a uh, beautiful um, elaborate description of this complete journey so now students let us move ahead with our first paragraph here so i would suggest all of you to open your chapter that is on page number 74 so that wherever you come across with difficult words we will be discussing them and you can jot down the meanings of of those difficult words so his journey he started with a uh, from village rahu now rahu is the village here from where he left that place for the further for his next phase of his journey towards mount kailash so a flawless half moon floated in a perfect blue sky on the morning we said our goodbyes extended banks of cloud like long french loaves glowed pink as the sun emerged to splash the distant mountain tops with a rose tinted blush so it was all the all just uh, the dawn hours when the sun was been just rising and they was they just exchanged their goodbyes and he was been starting his journey now that we were leaving ravu lamo said she wanted to give me a farewell present one evening i had told her through daniel that i was heading towards mount kailash to complete the kora and she had said that i ought to get some warmer clothes after ducking back into her tent she emerged carrying one of the long sleeved sheep skin coats that all the men wore satan seized me up as 
we clambered into his car. Oh yes, he declared, Drogba sir. So he just started with duckling back is a phrase being used here which means bending and going in back. Okay, that means he is slightly he is bending and then he is going back. Okay, like this. So this is how they just started with their journey in the car. Now, as they took this journey here, Satan was the driver here and he was being well aware of the routes. So, we took a shortcut to get off to Changtang. Satan knew a route that would take us southwest almost directly towards Mount Kailash. It involved crossing several fairly high mountain passes, he said, but no problem sir, he assured us, if there is no snow. What was the likelihood of that, I asked, not knowing sir, until we get there. So, they decided to take up a shortcut which Satan was being aware of and they were directly moving towards Mount Kailash. Okay, that was towards the southwest direction. Okay, and they uh, that route was been uh, moving through plains, and then thereafter there will be high mountains. And what the only problem which could be faced by them was the if they will not find snow, then the route is perfectly fine. So that was how they discussed the route, and they finally started with. From the gently rolling hills of Rao, the shortcut took us across vast open plains with nothing in them except few gazelles. Gazelles are a species of deers. Okay. So basically they were being, they just moved from the Rao village and uh, as they were moving further on that route, they found that they were on the Plains. They were moving on the open plains and there were gazelles over there. Okay. And so here we can see the picture, a sketch of Mount Kailash. Okay. So it is like a shivling. Okay. The shape of the of this mountain. Hmm. Now so Basically, they were being able to find few gazelles that would look up from nibbling the arid pastures and frown before bounding away into the void. So, nibbling means taking and cutting uh, small bits. Okay, they were basically they were cutting the grass and the dry arid pastures, and then they were being. Uh, becoming like they were becoming angry, okay, they were frown before bounding away into the void. So basically they were becoming uh, angry and before they were uh, jumping away. Hmm? So bounding means the deer they gallop, okay, they just bounce like that. So that is how they were been jumping away into the um, blank space, into a empty space. Okay. Further on where the plains became more stony than grassy, a great herd of wild ass came into view. Satan told us we were approaching them long before they appeared. Kayang. So Kayang was, uh, is the name of that wild ass. Okay. He said pointing towards a far off pile of dust. So he has been just pointing out towards the dust, um, dusty uh, environment which they could see in front of them. Okay. When we drew near, I could see the herd galloping and mass wheeling and turning in tight formation as if they were practicing maneuvers on some predetermined course. Now, what exactly was been happening? So, they were, they, there was a big herd, a big group of 
wild as kyang and they were been uh, feeling that the herd was been gal they, they just saw them when they went near they found that they were been jumping galloping okay and they uh, in in groups they were doing that okay en mass means in groups hmm? so basically they these were been uh, in they were turning they were taking turns in a very tight formation they were been very closely bonded with each other rather they were very close to each other okay and uh, somewhere like they were been practicing maneuvers maneuvers means that a uh, strategic movement hmm? that um, when when we take strategic movement in a very planned manner they are been they were been moving okay so plums of dust plums means cloud okay plums of dust billowed into the crisp clean air so finally because of their movement of these uh, of this herd the, there was lot of uh, dust clouds were been forming okay as hills started to push up once more from the rocky wilderness we passed solitary drogbas tending their flocks so drogbas are basically they are the uh, tribal people who used to uh, have lot big big herd with them and they are basically like we call them uh, the um, charvahas okay like that okay so they are the drogbas hmm? sometimes men sometimes women these well wrapped figures would pause and stare at our car occasionally waving as we passed them so all these drogbas they were all they were been solitary means they were been single they were all alone and they used to wave at times they were been when their car was crossing they were moving they they were waving their hands at times okay when the track took us close to their animals the sheep would take evasive action wearing away from the speeding vehicle so basically the sheep the animals they heard they were been taking an um, action that is known as avoiding action evasive action means avoiding action they were avoiding the car trying to pro have a defensive kind of movement hmm, in which they were been uh, just uh, trying to uh, move away wearing away means they were been moving away okay we passed nomads dark tents pitched in splendid isolation usually with a huge black dog a tibetan mastiff standing guard so then they came across with the tents which were been placed which were been positioned in the open and they were been of these drogbas these nomads okay they were been a nomadic community hmm? so and there was a presence of a black big black dog huge okay big black colored dog which is known as tibetan mastiff this is the name of that breed of that dog that is tibetan mastiff and it was a guarding dog basically of hunting nature hmm? these beasts would cook would cock their great big heads when they became aware of our approach and fix us in their sights we as we continued to draw closer we uh, they would explode into action speeding directly towards us like a bullet from a gun and nearly as fast so they could see these dogs they were they used to just move as they can uh, feel the presence of the of the car which was moving towards them and as they find the car to be quite close they used to speed up and they used to just follow the car uh, exploding in action means they were been very highly in a high speed they were following the car and they were been running as in the same speed as the car was been moving okay and seems like a bullet 
been shot from a gun they were so uh, furious and they were very uh, uh, in a speedy manner they were following the car these shaggy monsters blacker than the darkest night usually wore bright red collars and barked furiously with massive jaws so they were very, they looked very ferocious while barking and they were being black intensely black in color and looking like monsters okay shaggy means some very long and untidy unkept or unkept kept type of monstrous kind of look was there of these tibetan mastiffs okay now they were completely fearless of our vehicle shooting straight into our path causing chetan to break and sever so finally these dogs were been a hurdle and chetan was been every time was been trying to uh, put some break so that to avoid any kind of casualty and he used to take turns sever means to take turns uh, in his route so that he can protect the uh, those safeguard those dogs okay the dog would make chase for a 100 meter or so before easing off having seen us off the property it wasn't difficult to understand why ferocious uh, tibetan mastiffs became popular in china's imperial courts as hunting dogs brought along the silk road in ancient times as tribute from tibet so these tibetan mastiffs were been a very popular breed of dog which was been loved by chinese emperors and his court men because they were been hunting dogs and these were been brought through the along with the silk road by the uh, by the traders okay and they as a tribute tribute means as a gift from tibet so that was how the popularity of black mastiff was been known from ancient times okay by now we could see snow capped mountains gathering on the horizon we entered a valley where the river was wide and mostly clogged with ice brilliant white and glinting in the sunshine so finally they were as they were moving they can look that they were snow capped snow capped means mountains which are covered by snow they could see them from at the towards the end of the plain okay and finally they entered a valley where there was a river and it was quite wide enough and it was been clogged clogged means blocked blocked with ice okay and that ice was been really shining white glittering ice was there and it was shining because of the sunshine the trail hugged its bank twisting with the meanders as we gradually gained height and the valley sides closed in so finally they were been able to move further in the valley and they were finding they were actually gaining height they were moving up towards the in that valley and they were uh, taking uh, lots of the valley was it was getting closer and closer it was earlier it was it was wide and later on it was been narrowing okay now the turns became sharper and the ride bumpier satan now in third gear as we continued to climb so finally their ride their the, the drive on which they were been the route became bumpier bumpier means there were lots of bumps they were getting jerks okay and it was not a smooth ride now hmm? and that is why they were on the they were in their third the car was in third gear because now they were been climbing up okay the track moved away from the icy river laboring through steeper slopes laboring through means that means they were making very hard efforts okay putting efforts so that they can move through the steeper slope steeper means something which is very highly inclined okay so steeper slopes that sported big rocks uh, dubbed with 
patches of bright orange legends. So, what they were able to see? They were finding they could see uh, the rocky structures, big rocks which were being covered by lichens. Hmm, lichens are a type of plant and fungus. Okay, they are they are there. This is a colony of uh, fungus. Okay, beneath the rocks, hunks of snow clung on in near permanent shade. It felt the pressure building up in my ears, held my nose, snorted and cleared them. So finally, he was been a uh, uh, as they were been moving up on the high altitudes. He was feeling a bit pressure in his. Um, nose in his eyes as well as okay and he was it was been uh, difficult it was clogging inside hmm? so he cleared his throat finally we struggled round another tight bend and satan stopped so they took a tight uh, just took a tight turn and finally satan stopped there because he was been stuck 